Ferrari Shepherd, what an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you today to talk about your work and talk about your heart. <laughs> And it's an honor to meet you and for you to be here as well, you know. Um, oh, thank I just, you. I just appreciate, you know, all of the work that you do. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate what you do and artists like you do. To me, it's pure and utter magic. So let's dive in. Okay. At the beginning. Yeah. When did you decide to be an artist? Well, I don't think I ever decided to be an artist. Uh -huh. Like. Or I realize that you re were realize because it, that's a, that's a different question. So mm -hmm. I, I have always been an artist, you know, and I think the word that we used to use for it is weird. <laughs> like I was just a <laughs> really? weird person, you know. And it, it, you know, when I when I finally you know came into myself, that's when I knew I was like, oh, this weirdness is actually I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an artist, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, the first time was when I was in. Um, I was in kindergarten, oh. yeah, and my mother, um, she, uh, she, you know, she just had me in a regular kindergarten class, okay. and we had an art competition, and I won the art competition, and the work that was taken from that was put into the Art Institute of Chicago. Wow. So my first placement was when I was uh, in kindergarten. Isn't that something? You know? Yeah, it is. And, and you wound up yeah, going there. Exactly. Yeah. I, went, I went to school at the yeah. Art Institute, so it was kind of like poetic. You know, and uh, they had their eye on you. They did. You know, well, you know, since since an early time. But you know, do you remember what the mm -hmm. subject of the piece was? Well, no, it was actually just a man in a in a skirt with a sword because I was a kid. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was like, this looks cool, you know. And it was like, that's what I that's what I drew. But you know, in terms of art art taking it seriously, like. Um, that didn't come until I was in high school, you know. And at that time, I, I had, a, you know, every, like every teenager has problems and everything, and you're trying to find out who you are, right, your, your right. identity. Mm -hmm. And I had a teacher, her name was Mrs. Sokoloff, and she would uh, put on Jimi Hendrix, and she would just have us kids, like, just make art. And that's when I discovered Michelangelo. Mm. And I, I, I kind of I saw how far I could actually push the art, you know, and all of the other students in the class, you know, they kind of looked at me, and I became, you know, in that in that fish, big fish in a yeah. small pond. I was like, oh, it's Ferrari Shepherd. I love the fact that people interacted with the work the way they did, you know, and that set me on my path. I would um, love it. Weird and wonderful, yeah. Jimi Hendrix to Michelangelo. Yeah, now, exactly. speaking of Jimi Hendrix. Tell me about this show because there's one piece in here. I looked at it and it put me in the mind yeah. of Jimi Hendrix. Just the energy, the swag, the vibe. Yeah. Tell me about this particular show. So all of my work, you know, it's, it's, never, uh, it's never so on point that you know exactly what it is, but it references an energy. Mm -hmm. And there is a piece in the show, it's called Jimmy. Ah. And what I was trying to do is, you know, obviously, I can't have him sit for me, so we have to work for photographs. And I was trying to get his energy, you know, to evoke the energy of him into to the work, you know, infuse that into the work. And uh, yeah, I, I just think that Jimmy Jimi Hendrix yes. was um, was what I would say the the future of how the world views African Americans um, in that. You know, he was playing the blues, but he was pushing, he was innovating and pushing it forward. Exactly. And that's what we have always done uh, yeah. throughout history. And you know? talking with you earlier, that seems to be something that you are attempting to do big time with, mm -hmm. with your work as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Pushing its boundaries. Yeah. Which is what artists do. Yeah. You know, the world is, um, the world has a lot of problems, as we know, like you can't turn on the news without seeing all those problems. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the things that have always been special to me have been the, the, the um, inspirational things that happen in, in life, you know, and that comes with innovation, you know, where uh, everything from a Mercedes Benz to a house that you live in is created mm -hmm. by artists. And we are the visionaries that make life worth living. You know, this past pandemic that we had, uh, the first thing that people did other than buy a toilet tissue <laughs> is, um, is, is look for art. 
you know, and that's where verses came in, and we just like we're searching for something yes, yes. Uh, to define to define our lives right. in a way. You know what I mean? Well, speaking yeah. of inspiration, tell me what what is it uh, when you look out into the world or, or sit alone that that inspires you? Right. To make these creations, these wonderful creations, what inspires you? Well, you know, inspiration, you know, changes from moment to moment because we're, we're fluid. Mm. Human, we know as human beings, we're very fluid. But one constant that always is there is that um, I think about children, you know, mm. uh, the next generation, mm -hmm. how to inspire them to be the greatest and um, also just push, you know, rescue themselves because art rescued me. And I love when, you know, younger people, I have some young fans who come to all of my shows. I'm talking young, like, you know, maybe eight or nine yeah, years old. Uh -huh. And this is, they look at me and they say like, this dude is doing it so I can do it, mm -hmm. you know? And that's, that's sort of like the legacy or the, the energy that I want to put out there. And it doesn't have to be a child, it could be an adult as well, you know? I love it. Yeah. They look up to you. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people, whether they're artists or, mm -hmm. or in whatever industry yeah. that you look up to? You know. And if not a specific, maybe an aspect of their personality or being or carriage that yeah. you look for. Yeah. I look for people who are unafraid. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this world, like I said, is very, can be very difficult. And a person who just says, you know, it takes a lot of guts to come out and say, you know what, I've been given this gift. And it's, it's, it's bubbling inside of my, my very being and I have to let you, I have to share it with you. Mm -hmm. So that inspires me. And you know, anyone from um, Kurt Cobain to Tupac, Shakur, uh, um, I'm thinking about it. Uh, Charles Bukowski, mm -hmm. he's, he's a writer. Um, it, just, it just goes across the whole board of rebels. I, I, I really feel like, you know, the truest form of a human being is when they're a, a teenager. You know, they might not be the wisest, mm. but that's, they, they are getting- Pretty brave. They're yeah, pretty they're brave, brave yeah. and this is, this is their uh, perspective on a world that is new to them. And usually it's very confused, and all of that to me is beauty. It's beauty, like uh, vulnerability is beauty to me uh, because it shows the human aspect of us. We're not robots. I love that. You know? I've, I've, from, yeah. you know, where I sit as an artist on, in my lane, I look for that same thing, that vulnerability in mm -hmm. it. I, think there's a great deal of strength. Yeah, yeah. nervousness <laughs> like me right now because I'm not used to this, but you know, just I think that those are the things that have cultivated me in my practice where mm -hmm. um, I'm at a period in, in my career where, you know, a lot of people are responding well to the work mm -hmm. and we haven't had a chance to, you know, explore the painterly qualities, but I'm pulling from from art history, mm -hmm. and I'm also pulling from the, um, I don't wanna mess up the word, but it's like where it's not spoken, like things that cannot be spoken. Uh, and it comes from Africa, you know, it's the drumming, like the, the rhythms that, um, that, you know, you can't put into text because it's, it, it's something that you must feel. Right, right, you, know? you can't speak it or define it or to define it so specifically is exactly. to just limit it yeah, in a mim way. Yeah, it minimizes yes, it in a yes. way, you know? So that's every time that I approach a canvas, every time I approach the canvas, I'm trying to innovate, I'm trying to burst through. And, you know, I think that that is my drive. That's what makes me, you know, continue to want to do this. Like, I'm so grateful that I've come to a place where I, I can make a living doing what I what I love, but you know I don't think that that's enough. It's not enough. You have to have a love and a burning mm -hmm. desire for the craft that you're doing. Don't you ever know? lose that. Don't yeah. ever let that go. Yeah. When you approach a canvas, a, a blank canvas, mm -hmm. do you you have a bit of an idea and it 
it takes you over or who, I mean yeah. who's in control the canvas or you you know you know I, I always want to say that well I believe that I'm not responsible for this work I can't be like most days I can barely find my house keys <laughs> you know so sometimes like I wake up and I look at a work that I did the night previous mm -hmm. and I'm like I couldn't have couldn't have done that, you know. And it's not to minimize myself, it's just to have a greater, it's a, it's an appreciation for something greater than myself. And, um, you know, my process and my practice, it, it, it spans, a, it spans years. Mm. So I'll think about, I think, I thought about this show for years, mm. okay. you know. I didn't know how it would look, but I know, I knew how I wanted to feel to me. Yes. And if it feels right to me, I will say I will take credit for that that I have a talent for emotion. I have a um, an emotional intelligence that lets me know that if I feel it, everyone else can feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so far I've been successful at that. So, you know, great. Yeah, I think so. That. Tell me, what does it mean to be an artist mm -hmm. today? In, in these times, oh man, what does I, it mean to you? I think I think that you know, aside from you know, in uh, biblical days, not to go here with it, but this I just come the way on, I look let's at go. It. In biblical <laughs> days, we had they had prophets mm -hmm. and they had seers throughout history, sages, sages. Yes, griots, yeah. I think that artists are that, and we are also the emotional and moral compass yes. for society. You know, and oftentimes we don't get the credit or even the payments that we that we do. But you know, that is our that is our role. So, like, even if today nothing of mine ever does anything again, which I don't think it will do, but I, I still have a role, and my role is to to observe the world and to take inventory and to be the moral compass for it. You know? And tell the truth about it. Yeah, yes. exactly. What yeah. are you grateful for? Oh, I'm so I'm so I think it's probably so many things. I'm grateful to be couple. sitting here with you. And I with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my health. Amen. You mm -hmm. know. Grateful for my health. I'm grateful um for um all of the people who have uh, been supportive of me. Uh, on, on my rise, like, you know, it's, it's a dream. Every day I wake up and I, I almost I can't believe it, mm. you know? And I never want to lose that feeling because it's, it, it keeps me hungry and it keeps me knowing that, that I have a debt. I have a debt to not only those people, but to the world and to myself, you know? Yeah. So that thing is, that's very important for me. Hold on that forever. Yeah. You you've spoken about the eight year olds and the, the you know the young artists and fans who are just so you know who look up to you. Mm -hmm. um, what what memories do you want you know those who come and see to take away from your work? You know there is this thing that is, well, it was it was there was an era that I guess you had to be there and I'll, I'll tell my age which is not too much but. Uh, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, I remember my mother uh, going out with her girlfriends and mm -hmm. they would have on like sequins dresses mm -hmm. and they were like, you know, they were really fly. They would fly <laughs> and they would have, you know, lipstick and they were drinking, uh, what was it, daiquiris, mm -hmm. daiquiris. And I just remember seeing how like, my, I was like, my mother looks like a queen. You know, oh. these people look like royalty to me. and. You know, also where they were like these street pharmaceutical people, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, good entrepreneurs, yes. or you would say on the avenue, yes. on the avenue, mm -hmm. and you know they had on their their, their finance and their gold, and I would say, you know, these people, these are my people, and we have a regality, or there is something that is very powerful about us, and you know, uh, I, I later came to know as the world did that that spread throughout the world and it was called hip hop or it's called blues it's called whatever that we create mm. it's this magic mm. it's a feeling mm. so you know positions of power it, it wasn't necessarily a literal 
a literal take on it. It's more just like, I want you to feel like what I felt growing up watching these people and being like in awe of them. You're speaking of that yeah. regality and, yeah. you know, and sitting on top of the world and that hip hop, that jazz, that blues, that, you know, that adding to. And then when I look at your, your paintings, there's, I see I'm getting chills right now, mm -hmm. the, the gold leaf that's mm -hmm. a part you know, yeah. when we think of gold and incense and myrrh and all those yeah. things that there's high value placed on. So there I is. love that the images in mm -hmm. your painting, the black beautiful images and that. the yeah. yeah, and the gold leaf which gives that that yeah. vibe, that sense of You know, and for more, more than that, Angela, mm -hmm. the gold for me, yes. you know, it does have that high value, but it's also from the earth. Mm. And what I do with my work is I don't want to separate the gold leaf or make it special, mm -hmm. you know, right. because throughout mm -hmm. history we've had gold gilding and gold leaf. I want to incorporate it and make it part of the charcoal, mm -hmm. the canvas, my DNA on the canvas. I would cover up gold sometimes, okay. I'll, you know, because I feel that is the greatest representation of life. You know, we have this thing that's high value, of high value, yes. but it's also meshed in with, you know, you got problems and you get through the problems right, and whatever. Right. So when you look at my, my work, it's, it's, a, it's a map. It's the entire spectrum, I it's think. It's the spectrum of that, yeah. you know, the complexity mm -hmm. of what it feels, what it is to be a human being. What's the best sense. piece of advice that you've ever been given? You know, uh, my father told me, he said to me, uh, my father wasn't around my whole life, which you know, I you know, it's different. Yeah. No, when you when you grow up, you realize you know things happen, and I mm -hmm. forgive him completely. Exactly. But the one advice that he did give me is stay with me my whole life. And he said, you know, I was I was complaining to him about when well, I complained, I was reporting to him okay. that one of my friends that was a teenager who got his girlfriend pregnant, and man, his life is really messed up. You know, he stopped me. And he said, you know, never, never view another person, look at another person and think that you can't be in their position. Mm -hmm. I don't care w what it is, if it's high or low. Mm -hmm. Always know that you too can be in that position. Yeah, but by the grace of God. By the grace of Go God, you're not. <laughs> right, but it's, it's a great yeah. thing to remember, to yes. keep you humble, to always know, you know, if you're judging somebody, yeah. you know, that could always be you. So that, that, that was important for me, you know. Beautiful. If you had a superpower, I think you got one, but if yeah. you had a superpower, <laughs> another, yeah. what might it be? Oh man, uh, this one is good, you caught me off guard. Okay, I should have known this. <laughs> uh, superpower, my superpower would be the gift of making things right mm. for others, like you know, mm. and you know, to a large, as much as I can do, I, I feel like, you know, in my life, I've done, I've tried to do more good than harm, okay. you know, and I'm, I'm often there, I'm that friend that's there who yes. helps, yes, so yes. my superpower would be for the, to kind of like, you know, and not just heal the world, but mm -hmm. actually be able to like, oh, you have a problem, <sighs> make it okay, you know, I'm the make it okay man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But yeah, that's what I would do. What what individual inspires you? You you've mentioned a couple when you were mm -hmm. in kindergarten. You know, you've mentioned a couple people during the course of our our speaking mm -hmm. that I could pull out, whether it's Tupac or Rembrandt. But what other individuals, whether living or dead, have inspired you or do inspire you? Oh, you mean like artists? Yeah, uh, artists. I love Jack Whitten. Jack Whitten. You know, m most people are off target with my inspiration. It's like, well, we see uh, de, de Kooning and we see uh -huh, this and that, uh -huh. which is fine, because I love de Kooning, I love Jean-Michel Basquiat, of okay. course. Uh -huh. But, you know, in terms of thought process, the way an artist uh, approaches the work, I'm way more of a Jack Whitten fan. And Jack Whitten, he, uh, he, he just died recently. Well, I guess it was last year, was it? Um, he blended science and art to create this abstraction, you know, and he was always, look, he, was a, he was a philosopher. So, you know, most, most people, you know, you view an artist like, well, are you painting? Are you creating a sculpture? Are you creating, are you bringing forth this product? Where in, in essence, what it is to be an artist is really the thought 
that's behind it. And most of us are philosophical. We're philosophical and spiritualists, okay. you know? Yes. So I really love Jack Whitten's work, you know? And if anybody is watching this, go onto YouTube and look up Jack Whitten and his um, lectures. They are made, they'll change your life. I have to do that. Yeah. What little known fact about yourself or anything would you like to share? Uh, okay, I like pot pies, but I only <laughs> like the crust. I like uh -huh. the crust. That's the good, best part, yeah. Uh, what else about me that's so, you know, that's quirky, you know, I, I, I really love, I love my solitude, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and. That's good, so yeah. you spend a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I spend a lot of time alone, yeah. you know, but, but I also, you know, I crave, you know, yeah. I crave the social aspect because actually I'm studying everybody. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to study, exactly. I have to study and, and you know, feel the energy of people in order to, to illuminate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I love to spend time alone because, you know, those are the times when I'm able to heal myself, you know, and I think that, it, you know, it's so important to do that because it's the only place where you can really be yourself 100% is when you're in solitude, mm -hmm. you know, and then you come back to the world and you're more sound. Like I can look you in the eye and I can look everybody in the eye and I know who I am. Mm -hmm. because I spend a lot of time alone. I like that idea of you saying in that solitude you're able to heal yourself because yeah. you know as as an artist and as you've spoke of so poignantly you are you know giving so much from your from your being yeah, you know giving. so honestly right. you know so uh, that's one yeah thing. when you yeah, empty out you have to to, to replenish, replenish. There absolutely you go. Yep. what's the greatest uh, indulgence in your life mm. You know, mine would be art. Art, <laughs> so, art. Man, I can't artists. see it because everybody will hate me. No, oh. it's true. No, I'm just playing. Okay. I got that sense of humor. But you know, um, no, I, I've recently, I always, because I grew up kind of, you know, in modest, well, mm -hmm. in poverty, I always told myself that I didn't like things, you know, like expensive things. So you wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. wouldn't do it because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, what's the Can't have it, so You're I don't like, want it. I don't want it. I would make what I had cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I'm, I was famous for no, for, I was famous for wearing these beat up Chuck Taylors, and they looked so cool to me because it reminded me of just like you know punk rock era, you know grunge, and I'm like this works for me, you know. So I recently started realizing I'm like man, you know you like suits, you know it's okay and you it's okay really to like suits, today. you know. Nice. So that's a new area for me, and um, I'm really just owning it. To you say wear them well. make, you know, <laughs> that it's okay. Like it, I've worked, I've worked hard, and that's yeah. what I want to do. You know? Now, your show is mm -hmm. entitled "Positions of Power." Yeah. Can you just give us an overview of what that means? What that means to you? Share yeah. that with us before we take take a look around. Yeah, positions of power. It speaks. It's this dual because it speaks to the inner power that we all have. You know, whether you're a teenage girl or you're mm -hmm. prime minister of wherever, we have a power. And the challenge in life is to find it, is to find it and own it, you know, and keep it because this world is pretty crazy. You know, there's late night infomercials telling you that you're not enough. Mm -hmm. And I just think that I wanted to, with this show, I wanted to counter that mm -hmm. and say, no, you are, you're enough. You're more than enough. You're exactly the way that you're supposed to be as the creator made you. And you're beautiful, mm. you know? So in the other part of the, of the power is that I see a paradigm shift in political and socioeconomic uh, situations. And it may not be in my lifetime, but I see that shift moving. And I know that if we stay focused, that we will you know, have power over ourselves. You know, as people, wherever, wherever you are, and whoever you are. You know? oh. yeah. Well, thank you for Ferrari. It's been thank such you. a pleasure thank speaking you. with I you today. You. Thank you for your work, thank you for your <laughs> artistry, thank you for being here with me today. And uh, I just can't wait for you to give me a guided personal tour. Mm -hmm.